You know, for as much as you lie to me, I still just can't help but love you. Ah, who am I kidding? Let's go take some pictures. Today we're gonna talk about white balance. Why? Because I just got some glasses, and not some new glasses. I got glasses in general because I turned 42 this year and apparently my eyesight started going with my age and needed to get some glasses. So after talking to my wife about it, who's a seasoned expert with glasses, uh, we were talking about what special things I should get in my lenses, and blue light blockers were one of those things that she recommended for eye strain from looking at my computer. But one of the things that I've noticed, especially being somebody who is really in tune with color, is that these glasses make everything that I look at warmer. You can actually see right here uh, on my eyes, they're yellow right here. Well, that's not because I'm tired or I didn't get enough sleep. That's because these lenses have blue light blockers in them and consider that basically like a yellow filter that's offsetting the blue light that's coming from my monitor. Now this got me thinking. I also have this light behind me you see right there. That's a LumaCube Edge 2.0 desk light. Now the reason why I got that desk light is because it has multiple temperatures built right into a very soft light. And as I was playing with that light and looking at some of my prints in my office here, I realized, wow, there's a lot about white balance that we just haven't talked about. So I'm gonna head over to that desk and explain some things about white balance and the effect it has on your colors. Then we'll jump in Photoshop and I'll talk about the proper ways to white balance so that you ensure you get accurate colors almost every time. Now you may have heard me say in the past that your camera is lying to you. I even joked about it when I opened this video, but I don't necessarily mean that the camera is bad. What I mean is more like a child. A child that doesn't know what it's doing is wrong. And that's essentially what our camera is doing when it comes to white balance. It cannot, and I repeat, it cannot and never will give us the most accurate representation of color in any given scene, no matter if you are using a color checker or not. I'm going to prove that, okay? I know a lot of people are like, well, Blake, I use a passport color checker when I go out and I check the color based on what is white. And you are checking what is white based on what the camera is believing to be white with the current white balance that you have chosen and is not necessarily telling you what the individual colors are within the scene. So this is a perfect example. Right now I'm using this Loom Cube Edge 2.0 light as a reference to help me here. And the reason why, and the reason why is because this light can shift from 2700 Kelvin to 7500 Kelvin. It can do that in a matter of five stops or by pressing and holding the light and going up and going down. Right now we are actually in what we would call a neutral light position. We are right in the middle of what is more blue and what is more yellow. Now, I don't want to confuse this. I don't want you to get confused and be like, oh, well, 5,700 Kelvin versus 7,000 Kelvin. And I don't even care about Kelvin temperatures, to be quite honest with you. The only thing I care about is what color am I seeing when the color shifts and when the color changes. I'm using this light to simulate white balance. So right now we are at about the neutral point of where this light is. It's not too blue and it's not too yellow. Now, watch what happens as I make this more blue. As I make this more blue, you'll notice that our blues come out and almost pop off of this page, don't they? Now what's happening to every color that is on the warmer side of the spectrum, like the yellows and the reds? They're being pushed back and subdued. If you look at our neutrals here, they actually are taking on a more blue presence. Now, if I were to move this down to the warmer temperatures, you'll see that our warmer colors pop off this page. Our reds are very vibrant. Our yellows are actually starting to look even closer to where our greens are because our greens are starting to shift into where our yellows are. And if we look at our neutrals here, they are definitely more on the yellow side. I'll turn this up again to the blue side. I'm just going to shift it up by pressing and holding, and you'll see that now our blues are a lot more prominent than our reds and our yellows. And even the greens have shifted away from the yellows. I'm going to do that again and go back towards the yellows you'll see that now the greens are starting to look even more like the yellows and getting pushed further away from the blues. Now, this is important to know about color theory because green is a color that is really neither warm or cool until it's near the presence of a warmer or cooler color. When, when the blue light comes on, what happens to these greens? They become more on the cooler side. 
When we get towards the warmer edge of the light, what happens to those greens? They get closer to the yellows. Now again, watch what happens as we shift this more towards the blue side. We're going to get more towards the blues. There we go. Okay, you see our yellows are starting to get pushed back a little bit. Our reds are starting to get pushed back a little bit. They recede a little bit because the light that is present here is cooler. So the colors that are cooler on the color spectrum start to come forward, which is basically just our blues here. But green is our kind of like our trick color, as I said before. It is starting to become a little bit more prominent, but only because it's taking on the properties of that more blue light. Now, this is exactly how our camera works. Yes, I'm working with a light right here, this Edge 2.0 light that we see over here. I'm working with that light, but what this is is a telltale sign of how your white balance is going to affect all of the colors in your image. Now, you would say to yourself, well, Blake, that would be pretty easy then to get this all right. All we'd have to do is take a white balance a sample off of what is white on this sheet and all the colors should be perfect, right? Well, if we do that, that's going down here and that is our more neutral color. And you can tell that we still don't have perfect color for each one of these individual colors. This is why I stress the importance of working on your colors in Adobe Camera Raw or Photoshop after they are out of the camera. This exercise might seem very simple in principle, but it's incredibly advanced when we think about how this light is going to affect our prints. This print is a great example. I'm looking at this in neutral light. Now what happens as I make this light warmer? When I make this light warmer, look what starts to come out off the page, the sand, and also the clouds. And it would also appear that those clouds are in fact yellow. But are they? Because as we increase the light to be more blue, now our clouds appear more blue and what stands out in this photo more? The blue sky and not the yellow of the sand. So while you might be thinking about white balance as an in-camera thing, are you thinking about the lights of where you're putting your prints? Because that's going to make a difference as well because we could get everything just right in camera. We could go into Photoshop, get everything just right in Photoshop. We could print, and that paper could be either warmer or cooler paper, mind you, or the light in where we put that print could be warmer or cooler. So we have to keep the temperature of light in our mind from the beginning of our photographs all the way throughout the end. Let's jump into Photoshop and I'll give you some tips on how you can manage your white balance better to take some of these unpredictable variables out of the equation. Okay, so I'm here in Adobe Camera Raw and I'm looking at two very different images. One of them is very simple to fix our white balance off of. The other one is very tricky. This one is tricky because we have green down here, which if we look at the, the presence of this image, it is further along on the blue side of things. Well, because it's more blue, those greens are now favoring the blue rather than their warmer yellow temperature. Now, couple that with the fact that we got this rainbow here with actual very vibrant color, this is a nightmare for a camera to handle. This one's rather easy. You see, the camera can only make one distinction. Am I gonna make this more blue or more yellow? And that's it. Our eyes, on the other hand, are very different when we're out on a location. Our eyes can distinguish many different colors at any given time, and they don't need a filter of sorts like these glasses to tell them that something should be more yellow or more blue. They just perceive the color, and that's what we see. Albeit, if you have some type of color blindness, that is a little bit different, but for the most part, the normal functioning human eye does not have an issue differentiating color from one another because it doesn't have a white balance system built into the brain. So the one thing that we are up against at all times when it comes to color and our camera is the white balance. So a lot will say, well, Blake, what white balance do you shoot in then if you're so concerned about this color issue? Well, tungsten. I'm just kidding. I can't back that up. I was really just hoping someone like Petapixel would pick that up and take this whole video out of context. Like they take everything else online out of context. But what I shoot in is auto white balance. <gasps> auto white balance yes auto white balance and the reason why is because i know that at any point when i'm shooting in raw i don't need to worry about my white balance now the one caveat there because i can fix any white balance issue i want at the raw level if i was shooting in jpeg i would want to make sure that my white balance is perfect in camera or as perfect as i could get it however 
I don't typically shoot in JPEG. I'm a landscape photographer, primarily speaking, so I shoot my landscape images in auto white balance. So natively built right here into Adobe Camera Roll, instead of me having to worry about the sliders, all I have to do is press and hold the shift key. And if I press and hold the shift key at any time, it will allow me to make a white balance adjustment off of anything in this image. If I were to just single click, it's going to take a white balance adjustment off of that singular pixel that I click on. If I were to click and hold and move, that's gonna give me a white balance sampling of everything that is averaged in this given space. Meaning we're gonna take the white that's there, the gray that's there and every color that's in between. And we are going to balance the colors based off of that chunk. Now, the last I checked in Lightroom, because that's always the question, how would you do this in Lightroom? I believe Lightroom has a nine by nine or three by three. I'm not entirely sure that it has the select the entire image uh, feature or a sampling of the image feature. That is something that you would have to check if you're a Lightroom user. I am not, so I'm not too concerned with that. Now, you could also press and hold shift and white balance the entire image if you'd like as well. Now, what white balance should I choose when I have so many options? Well, the answer is in what did you see while you were there or what was your vision for that place? Now we can make a sampling for this and say that that is white. So therefore this should be the way that this image is going to look. But what if I like the way the colors look better when I basically neutralize the entire image? I can go with that as well. It really is up to me and my vision on what I feel is right for the image. However, I would shy away from doing something like this and I would shy away from doing something like this entirely too warm. As soon as the viewer looks at this, they're going to say, whoa, that white is just really bad. It looks really dingy and yellow. Again, press shift, click and drag. We can neutralize it. Now, when it comes to an image like this, this image is very difficult for a camera to white balance properly. Whether it's set into auto white balance, it doesn't matter what white balance you choose here. If we were to go in through and choose different white balances, when we press auto, it's trying to make the image warmer based on these rocks and the green in the foreground here. But what's happening to our sky? We lose that beautiful blue sky. So what happens when we choose daylight? Well, that's probably what my, the white balance was when I shot this to begin with, based on the auto mechanism that I was using there. We get more blue, but what happens to everything that's warm? It gets subdued. It gets pushed back. Now we set something like cloudy. It looks a little bit better. But if I press and hold shift and I click up here on the sky and I white balance off of everything that is white and gray in this image for that matter, this is actually probably closer to an accurate white balance that I'm going to see. Now, the problem with this, though, is I have two very distinct elements here. I have a sky that needs to be blue and I have a foreground that needs to be more warm. So what do you do? Well, the best thing that you can do to combat this is to go into the masking section and make a selection for your sky. And once you make the selection for that sky, you come up to these three dots and you're going to say duplicate and invert mask. And that will give you a selection for the foreground. So now what we can do here is actually make this much more accurate. This foreground is our overlay right here showing us that that's our foreground. So I know I'm working with the foreground. If I want more temperature or a different temperature in this foreground, I can adjust the temperature accordingly and maybe even give it a little bit more of that green that we see in there. Maybe a little less on the yellow there. It looks like the white balance, the, the treatment that we had there from the overall white balance that we did in the, in the basics, the general basic settings were a little bit too favored in the um, yellows. So pull some of the yellow away to make that a little bit more blue, but then add in a little bit more of that green and less of that magenta. Now let's click on the mask for the sky. Now for the sky, I'm going to move this over and make this more blue. Now when I make that more blue, look at what also happens to the rainbow back there. As I make this more blue, you can see the indigo and violet start to come out a lot more. As I make this more yellow, we lose the indigo and the violet. And what are we left with? A lot of orange and red. So here we have a competition now of not just what's happening with the sky and what's happening with our foreground, but also with another colored element in the image that needs to be treated accordingly as well. So what I could do for that is actually add a mask to this. I'm just going to go and create a new mask up here and make that a brushed mask. Now with this brushed mask, I'm going to make the feather a little bit less because I'm trying to basically make a good selection for this rainbow here, which is very difficult to do unless I brush it in. So I'm going to go ahead and just click right here and then press and hold shift and click up there. And that should be a pretty good uh, selection for the rainbow, at least decent enough for me to get away with. Now with this rainbow, 
we might need to add a little bit more of that indigo, but then maybe a little bit more of this magenta to bring out those reds and oranges a little bit more. Now we can see that this is helping our rainbow quite a bit, but it's subduing our yellows. This is where things get really tricky because we now need to make sure that that has the proper amount of color in it that it needs. And it might be that as we move the magenta up, we get a little bit more of that blue in the rainbow as well because blue and magenta are very close in proximity on the color wheel to one another. Therefore, if that gets more magenta, it will bring out more of that blue in the process. There is the before, there is the after. Now we could also get maybe a little bit more saturation in that rainbow just to bring up some of these colors so we can see them a little bit better. And that does help quite a bit with the rainbow. There's the before, there's the after to get more balance in that rainbow with some of those other colors that we might see in there. If we pull it more towards the yellows though, we lose those blues and indigos. So, or the indigos and violets, I should say. If we move this just about right there, we should be pretty good to get a good balance of the best of both worlds. And I will increase the saturation on that a little bit more. This is one of those images that's kind of like a unicorn, right? There is no way that our camera is going to be able to get this specific image perfect every time when it comes to white balance. If we look at our overall before, just pressing the P for the preview button, here's before, here's after. Those colors are significantly better for the foreground and for the background. I would say that I could probably even go a little bit more blue in the background sky. So we'll go to the sky, make that a little bit more on the blue side and use that actually, that's what we'll do. We'll use that to get that more blue which will bring out more of that indigo and violet in the uh, rainbow. But then let's go back here and give this a little bit more yellow in that rainbow to get some of the yellow back there. And now we've got a beautifully balanced rainbow. Now let's look at the before and the after. Overall before, after. We've got beautifully balanced color for the sky and also for the foreground and for that extremely colorful rainbow. This would be impossible for our camera to do by itself. So anyone that says that you can get your color perfect in camera is absolutely incorrect. And the reason behind that, again, is because your camera is not going to say, well, I can go ahead and make that foreground more yellow and I can go ahead and make that sky more blue. There's no way that a camera is going to split the subject matter in an image and give it the proper white balance in either direction. That's why it's imperative that we understand color in post-production. If you don't understand color very well and you want to get a better understanding of it, I have a full course called The Color Course. And in that course, I'm not only going to explain topics like this, I'm also going to explain how you can separate these colors to make them even more phenomenal. So your yellows get pulled away from your greens, your greens get pulled away from your yellows, your yellows get pulled from your reds and your blues pull away from your violets and so on and so forth. I have a three-step color workflow that I share with you in that course. It starts with color correction, then color separation, then color grading. Because what would happen if you tried to color grade this image before getting the temperature set correctly? You'd have a nasty color cast in your image that you would never be able to get rid of and you'd be scratching your head the whole time wondering, where did this color cast come from? Probably came from the beginning, but you jumped ahead of what you were supposed to do in the color workflow. If you're interested in that, you can click on the link below. There should also be a link somewhere here on the video for you. And on that page, you can learn a lot more about my color course. So when I say that your camera is lying to you about color, it's not your camera's fault. It's not trying to be a bad camera. It just doesn't know any better. It can only do more blue or more yellow and that's it. But we need more color. And the only way to get that is in post-production, but you have to understand color first. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop, make them seemingly simple so you can use them in your workflow today.